Good morning, summoners, and welcome back to the Mobilytics patch 8.1 video tier list. We've done it, everyone. Congratulations. We made it to the end of the preseason. Let's get a round of applause for everybody. All right, all right. So January 16th is when this patch's effects will take place, and it's also when the rank season will begin. So January 16th, season 8 will officially begin. And this is one of the most important tier lists too, because this is going to help you win and get through those promos. So make sure you check out the Mobilytics tier list for patch 8.1 and let's get into it. As we always do, we go top lane and then down the map. So for top lane, Gangplank and Camille have finally made it into S or optimal rank. Now Gangplank is interesting because in theory he should be a very hard champion to use and master. However, despite this, he consistently is able to crush top lane. He has a very high play rate and especially in Korea, he is the highest play rate and win rate top laner. So in theory, he should be very hard to play and not do this, but whether it's Kleptomancy or Grasp of the Undying, he seems to do very well in lane regardless, and he doesn't struggle one bit to carry games. As far as another carry top laner goes, Camille is kind of a case where a champion just has a really good synergy with one rune, and this time it's with Arcane Comet. With Arcane Comet, she has a spectacular laning phase trading pattern, and she scales quite well because she has true damage sheen procs. The combination of building Trinity Force, Steric Gauge, and Titanic or Ravenous Hydra makes her split push and tower killing insanely fast. For other top laners, you might want to look at Alawi and Nasus. Both of these champions are also Kleptomancy abusers. Nasus specifically is one we want to highlight because he's a little bit less known to be OP than Alawi. The buff that Nasus received many moons ago gave him a lot of CDR on his Q while in his ultimate. This makes him a very strong duelist, and because of his Wither being one of the single strongest abilities in the entire game, and now that his E reduces percentage armor rather than flat, this means that Nasus does very well into tanks who let him stack and farm up. For our fellow friends who like to stick to the forest, let's look at Nidalee and Evelyn who are our two newest additions to the S rank. You may notice that both of these champions are AP, which means that they're making use of one kind of overtuned item, which happens to be Frostfang. In high elo solo queue all around the world, Nidalee and Evelyn are making really good use of the item Frostfang, which yes, is a support item, but no, is not bad on them. The item is incredibly overtuned, giving AP champions a lot of what they want out of an item, and what's even better is that once you complete the quest, you get a very big move speed buff. You can almost think of it like you're allowed to take your electrocute and phase rush on the same champ. Other than Shyvana, our optimal picks for jungle are a little bit hard to play and are going to take a little bit of extra investment from you, but trust me, they're definitely worth it. In high elo, diamond plus solo queue, all three of these champs are very successful despite being relatively hard to play. For the mid lane, things have moved around ever so slightly, but Katarina is back in optimal. Katarina in the last several tier lists has been bouncing around between an S and an A champion. However, despite all of this, she still continues to thrive in solo queue. Despite her very high pick and ban rate, Katarina has a lot of success in solo queue. Other than that, mid lane is pretty stable right now, with only a few minor adjustments. Aurelian Soul moved up from B to A, Kastadin moved down from A to B, but things are pretty stable. For AD Carry's bot lane, Kog'Maw and Vayne have worked their way up into S, and both of these champions are abusing a new strategy. If you remember back to the Ardent Sensor meta, what a lot of AD Carry's would do is they would either start a Relic Shield or at some point get one and upgrade into a Targon's Brace. The entire reason for this was because they would try to fund as much support income as they possibly could, allowing their Janna, Soraka, or Lulu to get their Ardent Sensor as fast as possible. But now, AD carries are doing this once again, and we've kind of made it back into an ardent meta, because a new strategy has just come out. Most successful AD carries are abusing a combination of Fleet Footwork, Overheal, and Targon's Brace. What tends to happen is these AD carries will have the Out of Combat Battery Shield from Targon's Brace, they have Overheal, and they have Fleet Footwork, as well as an Ardent Sensor support to give them a shield or a heal, meaning that they have roughly half of their life in shields, which means they are not able to be bursted down by Assassins or Poke. This has almost done a clean sweep on the bot lane meta for both AD carry and supports for what champions are viable. Once again, Kog'Maw, Vayne, and things like Tristana, Twitch, and Zaya have shot their way right up to the top of the list, and things like Janna and Soraka for supports are now up there as well. For the other supports that aren't necessarily ardent abusers, Alistar is still quite a good pick. 
The cow is able to set up a lot of plays bot lane. With his plethora of CC, he can be both the engager and the disengager. He can be a protector for his AD carry and crush the enemy AD carry. His tankiness with his ultimate makes dives very easy and he's able to set up a lot of plays for your team. That's going to wrap it up for the Mobilytics patch 8.1 video tier list. Make sure you check out the full tier list on our blog and make sure you check out Mobilytics at mobilytics.gg for the best performance website to help you improve at League of Legends.